Well, Tuesday of Masters Week and Elk is in a very beautiful looking Augusta, Georgia right now. Elk, I keep seeing these images on the TV of this like pristine, perfect golf course with the amazing, perfect blue skies, great weather, but it's all going to flip. I know the sun came out this afternoon, Diane. It was sort of, sort of hazy all day and then at about three o'clock, the perfect sun came out and it was just the most glorious afternoon ever. Walked as I was leaving, I was checking out the par three course. They must have had a hundred people over there prepping that for tomorrow's par three. They've redone the course, they've done a lake, they have its new uh, cottages out there, they have a new uh, merchandising place, new place for drinks. It's looking very, very nice. I'm going to put some seats out in the morning uh, at eight o'clock in the morning on the ninth hole. So I'm gonna be there with all the action come tomorrow afternoon on the path three course. Okay, and we'll we'll hear from you afterwards, but my gosh, and whenever Augusta does anything on the property, that, you know, no corners are cut. It's the best of everything. So that's gonna be amazing, especially to see like merchandise at the par three, that's gonna be, I mean, a huge seller. They don't have many problems about ways of making money, Diane. I did go into Pro Shop today. There is some children's gear. I'm going to go back tomorrow when it restocks up. So maybe I can get some pajamas or something for Baby Gray with some Master logo. That'd be good. That's my goal. Okay, thank you. I would love that. Love that. It's funny. I was just watching you on TV finishing third in the 1993 Masters. Um, that was great. Another one I missed. Another missed. Know, Another missed you, opportunity. You hold a huge pot and the crowd went wild. <laughs> I heard a few roars today. We were out on the course early this morning, Diane and, and Rory McElroy. No, sorry. Tiger Woods, Justin Thomas and Freddie Couples were playing together. We got down there, they were on the second hole, they were practicing and they all sort of went for it on hole three. Um, yeah, Tiger hit one up there stiff and the crowd, you know, there's 10,000 people following that group at eight, eight in the morning. The crowd, you know, let out one of those enormous roars at 8 a.m. on a Tuesday and we all looked at one another and said, uh, is this Tuesday or is this Saturday? I mean, it was, there's so many people at the tournament, Diane. I don't know if they've let more people in, but I'm, I'm telling you, there's a hundred thousand people were at the golf today. I reckon they may, will never know how many they are, but this town is packed. And the buzz down here right now is all about these four heavyweights at the top of this board. I'm talking about Rory McIlroy, Scotty Scheffler, John Rahm, and you you pick the fourth one. It can be whoever you like. You know, it could be your player, it could be whoever. But those those three big heavyweights, that's the talk of the town. Not as much talk about Tiger Woods. They know that this is not ceremonial golf. However, we do know that when you watch Tiger walking right now, it looks painful. I know he's going to make it. Everything's going to everything's going to work out with him. Don't know if he can win the tournament. No, I know it. I I know he can't win the tournament shouldn't say that because he's so experienced and he's and he's so well organized for this tournament but diane this tournament now has become a very important thursday because as you know the weather is going to change on friday so if i'm a player i'm thinking i've got to get off to a good start <clears throat> i've got to be somewhere around par or just under on thursday when the weather is good because when it gets down to 45 50 degrees and blowing 20 30 miles an hour for the rest of the week and rain how do you catch up? Well, you probably can't. Well, Rory was talking about that today because that's been his big problem. I mean, this is his white elephant. This is the elusive major to complete the Grand Slam and, and the one that he wants more than anything. He said today that when he walked in to do his interview in the press room, they had a picture of him last year when he holed out from the bunker on 18 on Sunday. And he had a massive smile on his face. And he said that... That's an amazing memory for him to have because it almost, it doesn't erase any scar tissue that he's had from the previous, what, nine masters that he's played in or whatever. But, you know, that that's a, a good memory for him to hang on to and to almost start fresh this year. But he said himself that that's his problem. He has to get off to a good start on Thursday. And this year, it sounds like it's going to be more important than ever. Yeah, it's definitely going to be... All eyes now got to be focused. You know, I have people texting me all day. Who's the favorite? Who's the favorite? You know, as you know, I'm looking at Ram this week. Scotty Scheffler, I've been texted by a dozen people today have told me that Scotty Scheffler shot 30 on the back nine today when they followed around. So 
Scotty Scheffler is right there. Brooks Kepska's father, Brooks Kepka's father came and sat with me for maybe an hour today, Diane, under the umbrellas, chatting away, told me that Brooks's Brooks's um, form is the best it's been since he won at Beth Page Black. And his only goal left, Brooks, is to I think he's playing nine holes with Roy McElroy in the morning, and he's very keen to see Brooks is very keen to see how he feels playing with Rory and seeing what, you know, what his game looks like. Is there, is there any difference or whatever? But Brooks Kepka is a bit of a bit of a wild card. That would be the fourth at the top of the show that I just said, the big four. I'm putting Brooks Kepka in there right now because his father knows him well. He just won it live, you know, all this stuff. But he has to be accounted for. Yeah, and he, he's played well here in the past. I would put the fourth guy as Cam Smith. But what's really interesting, and it was a great point that, um, was kind of magnified by something Cam said. He talked about the fact that his his off season, he was a little bit lazier than he had been before. And obviously, we know that Cam has now gone to live. They've had a longer off season. You know, these you know, the other big three that you talk about, they've been playing a lot. We've had all these elevated events, and they've been getting tournament rep, tournament rep. They've been getting wins under their belt. Um, so it's got to be a little bit of a different dynamic and it's going to be interesting to see if there is a disparity in the live guys and their standard of play compared to the, the top guys that are winning and playing on the PGA Tour. Yeah, we don't really, I really don't think it's an all-in poker tournament this week to see if the live guys, if they actually play good or not because we already know they're great players. I mean, Dustin Johnson's press conference today, he's like, hey, I'm still playing golf for a living. These are still my friends. You know, everybody settled down. All these guys that are playing the Masters this week, they play at all kinds of tours all over the place. Relax for just a second. You know, I, I will note, Diane, I was down on the 13th hole today and I stayed there and watched some JM play two balls to try to hit the green from about, I reckon it was about 220. And he was very conscious of that side hill lie that I talked about. And it was exactly what the Masters is, had sort of, idea was to put the tee back so they would have to deal with that slope and he hit the most two horrible shots you've ever seen from a pro off that really steep side hill lie he walked away shaking his head he hit a three wood way out to the right up on top and another one he almost uh, hit it fat so uh it's going to be very interesting on 13 it used to be kind of a walk in the park we used to think oh here's another chance for another guy to go another one under but it's different now diane with the tee way further back Okay. Well, that I mean, that's going to be a, a real talking point once the tournament starts. Anything else that you saw today that you think is maybe a little bit different this year or maybe a little bit highlighted? Uh, you know, the course is set, you know, it's 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 a very big golf course right now and and it's it's everything's pushed way back. There's a fair amount of grass on the fairways. It's not dry at all. It's still a bit <clears throat> there was a lot of sand in the it put down for the patrons today, green sand so you don't squish in. So it is a little bit damp. Now, will, who will this favor? Well, I've had people tell me today that for the last you know dozen years, it's always been the Bombers. Well, it's going to be an advantage in the cold to hit it further for sure. And, you know, the greens, we know they can control the speed of the greens with the, the sub air. But, Diane, I think everything now has changed in my mind. It's all about Thursday. Who can get going on Thursday because it's, it's it's going to be one of these tournaments when it gets cold is it's going to be very difficult to catch up mm -hmm. so they got to get off to this good start so if i'm a player tonight i'm thinking about hey i'm getting ready tomorrow because i got to get out of the gate on thursday it's all about thursday right now have you checked the weather forecast for friday i mean do you think there's a there's a benefit to being early late or late early well i was doing exactly that before i came on with you to, to ask myself that question and I think it's all about just how you play and how's your momentum. Uh, again, it's going to be cold and windy. That I was with Fuzzy Zella most of the day today, and we talked about what's the diffi most difficult wind on this golf course. He said, Elk, by far, the most difficult is the north wind, which plays into you on hole number one. And he said it just, it just keeps you off balance the whole day. It's just very difficult. Some of the downwind holes are worse. You know, it's hard to score. So we're going to see a lot of that, and it's going to be cold, and it's going to be windy. So – Yes, I hate to flog that dead horse, Diane, but it's a Thursday game right now. 
Okay. Okay. Well, tomorrow <laughs> is the big par three contest. Is there anyone in particular that you're going to be checking out? Well, I'm hoping to see Jack Nicholas, of course, come out uh, tomorrow. Uh, you know, the, the grades will be teeing off on Thursday morning early. I'm going to put chairs out on the back of the ninth green, so you may even see us back there. Hopefully, I can get out there early enough to do that. Um, <laughs> you know, I just want to see everybody. They've redone that course. I think there's going to be a lot of enthusiasm. Some some years, you know, players have skipped the par three. I don't think anyone's going to skip it tomorrow because it's, <clears throat> it's a new playground, and I think they're all going to want to get over there and have a look at it you know, including Tiger and the rest of them. But it's a it's a wonderful little miniature golf pasture, if you will, very pretty pasture, but it's now it's all spruced up and it's going to be, oh, I don't know how many people can fit in there tomorrow, Diane, 50,000 maybe. I don't know. There's more room for people to watch. Okay. Hey, here's a question for you. When's the last time you played Augusta National? Um, it was a couple of years ago. My friend from Houston, Mr. Butler, is a member and he invited Sam and I to come up. So... I've played it since they've lengthened it. I haven't played it since, obviously, the 13th hole. I actually got a tour today by my friend Possum, my caddy down there. He took me on a tour around Augusta National. I think I can say this on this show that I was in a, with, with Possum. But, I've Diane, I finished up behind the 13th tee today uh, in on the golf course. On, and, and looking back, it was surreal because I'm looking at all the people back over there and nobody knows I'm there. I'm just having a little peek at the new 13th tee. So... You know, Augusta is amazing uh, just from logistics. They've got a road that goes all the way around the perimeter so trucks can get in, restock things. It's just, you know, it's an amazing place. When you're there, do you just want to go play? Like, do you just see the fairways and the lush grass and the greens and memories of days gone by when you were playing and, as I said, finishing third? Do you? Is it hard to resist that temptation to go out I, and want I, to play? I would answer you truthfully. I would say, yes, I do. But the holes look too long now. The, the first hole is ridiculous. I remember how, you know, when Davis Love and I went back there one time for a practice round and we had suspected maybe they had moved the tee back. And he asked one of the members, he said, hey, has this tee been moved back? And they said, eh, I'm not sure. And he said, well, either they moved the tee or they moved the clubhouse because the tee used to be down there a little bit. So. You know, it, it's a long, it's a it's a big hitters course now, and they don't really have big long tees. As as you're in the back or you're way up the front. So anyway, it would be a great thrill to play at any time. But uh, the course is very big right now. Okay. Okay. Great. Right. Well, you enjoy your night. Have a great time tomorrow at the par three contest, and then we'll catch up with you afterwards. I'll be catching up with you and everything about the par three course tomorrow.